from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, holders of dice, uh, rollers of dice, people who remember a time, or anyone who remembers having to put a crayon on your dice, uh, which I'll try to explain. There's a crayon, I, there's crayon in my dice. Oh, my darling, my darling. That is not a song. Uh, but, you know, if you're confused, you say, what in the name of dice? Uh, di- dice uh, and uh, cr- for the love of, cr- you got me crying at your crayon, your crayon rambles. Crayon rambles? That sounds like something I could sell. Uh, is that anything like crayon nubs? No, my, even my brain was crickets there. Ram, the Crayon Rambler. Crayon cray, cray Rambler. I guess I thought this episode tonight was going to be about one thing, but oh boy, we're going to be rambling about crayons. Because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff so you can fall asleep. It is a podcast that puts you to sleep. Been making this show since uh, 2013. It's my honor to keep you company and be there because you deserve a good night's sleep. But this show really is there to cut through the loneliness, the thoughts, the feelings, the physical sensations that are keeping you awake. And to be your friend and just take your mind off of stuff and, and kind of soothe you through nonsense. So I'm so glad you're here. What we got coming up is uh, first is going to be support. That's how the show comes out free twice a week, totally optional paying for it. Then there's a long meandering intro meant to ease you into bedtime and uh, to, to, to uh, like, uh, it's part of your wind down routine or whatever you want to call it. Then there's, uh, later on, we'll do a bedtime story. And this show is very different. It does take a couple tries to get used to. That's what most regular listeners say, just because, like, uh, like, one, all that filler word, right? Like, uh, what? But also just that the podcast is something you kind of listen to and kind of keeps you company. So I'm so glad you're here. Work really hard. Um, and uh, these sponsors are how we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, but this is Scoots here. This is where I like, uh, ask you to, hey, if you, if you think about for signing up for Sleep With Me Plus at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. With just a few questions. If you're new to the show, just ignore this message. Or if you only listen to Sleep With Me occasionally, or it can be easily replaced by another show, don't, not important. Do you listen to Sleep With Me regularly? Yes. But yeah, does it improve your life uh, in any way at all? And would you miss Sleep With Me if we stopped making it? Like, how much would you be willing to give on an annual basis or a monthly basis to say, hey, go ahead and start that podcast back up? So this is a way of not doing that. I'm asking... If you if the answer to those questions are are yes yeah you're a regular listener yes sleep with me improves your life yes I could and would pay for the show if it was missing from my life I'd pay to get it back or if you lost it you're like you'd say oh where oh where has my sleep with me podcast gone could you help me find it and this is a reward a reward reward whatever 120 bucks uh, I need to, my year of sleep with me back. Uh, or you would find a way to support the show if you said, well, now I got to put up a poster. If you, if, if the answers are yes, like I do need, like uh, we're in, kind of in that place right now and the whole podcasting industry is in that place more or less. Uh, where it's like, hey, I really need you to think about supporting the show right now if the answer is yes to those questions. So we don't have to go through, oh, where, oh, where has my Sleep With Me podcast gone? Because I don't want that. I love making the show. It does take a team of people to make the show. So think about it, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. If you get a lot out of the show and you'd miss it and you'd say, oh, where, 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 oh, where has my Sleep With Me podcast gone? Sign up for sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. And I'll, I'll thank you. Believe me, I'll send you a video and say thanks. Thanks so much. Support for Sleep With Me comes from Odoo. If you feel like you're wasting your time and money with your current business software or just want to know what you could be missing, then you need to join the millions of other users who switch to Odoo. Odoo is the affordable all-in-one management software with a library of fully integrated business applications that help you get more done in less time for a fraction of the price. To learn more, visit odoo.com slash slash with me that's o d o o dot com slash with me odoo modern management made simple
All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. Do yourself a favor, go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and take that Helix quiz. That was about four years ago that I took the Helix quiz, got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux, which is a perfect mattress for me and the way I sleep. Because the thing is, the Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux collection, the newly released Helix Elite collection. They have a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made just for kids. And how would you know which one is going to fit you and your body? You just take that Helix sleep quiz. You find the perfect mattress in under two minutes. That personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new mattress. And here's the thing. Everybody's unique. Everybody sleeps differently. And that is why Helix has uh, several different mattress models to choose from. Each design for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. You know, if you're like me, I sleep on my stomach and my side. I sleep a hot, so I want to stay cool. And that's what happened. I took the quiz. I got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. I love my Helix Dusk Lux. And the way I know is every time I leave town, I cannot wait to get back. That first night back in my Helix Dusk Lux, it's like I'm in a state of sleep bliss. Not only is it the best mattress I've slept on, but setup is fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box, a straight to your door for free. And Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and use the code helixpartner20. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Uh, the one part of the podcast I need you here is where I pop my peas, if you please, where I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. And I wanted to thank Jess, who got a Helix uh, sleep, uh, took the Helix quiz, uh, Helix Sunset with uh, Queen, and then a Glaciotex pillow top. I got to check out that Glaciotex pillow top. Uh, I have the Helix uh, Dusk Lux myself, uh, but thank you, Jess, for taking the Helix quiz, using our link, and supporting a sponsor. The show wouldn't exist without people like you. That's what the Sleepy Supporter Zone's all about. So thank you, Jess. Uh, could not do it without uh, listeners like you. If you want to be like Jess, you want to hear, wouldn't you love to hear your name on the Sleepy Supporter Zone, like Jess's name? Uh, if you do if you do want to do that, uh, fill out the form. It's like support a sponsor, take a quiz, uh, try ZocDoc, try, uh, take the Helix quiz, uh, check out Air Doctor, Odoo, Progressive, and let them know about, let me know about it felt form of sleep with me podcast.com slash sponsors so we could thank you like jess that's the first part of the sleepy supporter zone the second part of the sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need right now i'm trying to do this whole thing faster uh but uh yeah if you if you need extra resources right now including international resources there's links in the show notes it's about being a part of positive change not just saying black lives matter not just saying stop aapi hate not just saying support ukraine but taking action learning more you can do that as a part of your communities how you choose you can reach out to us and let us know what you're doing uh or you could join uh sleep with me in supporting uh, the midnight mission in los angeles the Trevor Project and Hand in Hand. You could also use our show notes to learn more uh, or, you know, reach out. Let me know what positive changes you're participating in and being a part of. Uh, that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, runner, runner. Uh, 
thanks, Mr. Bard. Don't forget, you can get sleep phones, uh, Sleep With Me branded sleep phones at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones, and you sleep with me to get $5 off your order. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do we do, we do, do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed and turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake. It could be thoughts on your mind that you're thinking about. You know, thoughts about the past, the present, the future... Thoughts about meaning. Holy cow. No, thank you. Uh, thought, you know, I don't need any... Uh, I don't know. I don't need, you're right. Let's just move on. Let's just skip meaning altogether. What do I mean? I mean uh, thoughts. I also mean feelings. Anything coming up for you emotionally related to those thoughts or that's left over from the day or that's in anticipation of stuff. It could be physical sensations, changes in time, temperature, routine. It could be work schedule, or maybe you work a different shift. Or you could be going through something, getting over something, be, have something coming up, or something else. The reason I go through all that stuff is to let you know you're not alone. And maybe you don't feel alone, or maybe you don't feel lonely, but a lot of people do. So that's why I mentioned that. And and to remind you, even though this is a podcast, even though it's kind of a together alone, alone together situation, that's actually very important. And I, I, I dare say, not for me, but po a powerful connection we get to share, like something I'm uh, I, I'm tentative to bring up, because it, it does feel so precious, even though it's uh, kind of unexplainable and strange and indirect. What I mean is that. Uh, a lot of us know what you're going through, even if we don't know about it, because we've experienced something similar. We can relate to how it feels. And even if I've never been through something, the same thing that's keeping you awake, there's probably someone listening who has. And even if they haven't been through the same thing, they can relate to how it feels. They, they, they say, yeah, that's tough. Uh, yeah, I can see why you can't sleep. You really do deserve a good night's sleep, though. Or they maybe probably they would just silently nod their heads in a loving way. Let's all do. I don't. I don't know. I, can't, I don't know if I can do that. I'm perform. That's too performative. Uh, but I can nod my head in a caring way. I don't know why I say. Well, okay, now I'm. Not, all right. Maybe put, if you put a smile on your face, it's a little easier. But it's true. Like I really am honored to get to make this show because of that. Because I know how it feels. I know what it's like. Uh, Trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep, trouble whatever the other one is, uh, dreading bedtime. I know what that feels like. So that's why I make the show. I also make it because you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve the sleep you need so your life is more manageable. And a bedtime where you could feel some solace and some respite. And that is extremely important because I know what it's like when I don't have that. And I know what my life is like when I have it. And life's not even easy when you're rested, right? How come there's no T-shirt that says that? Don't ask. Life's not easy when, even when I'm rested. They say, well, probably because that doesn't make it very, I mean, it makes sense, but not on a T-shirt. I say, well, what if we brand it with one of those sl sleepy characters? Uh, and they'd say, but you're pointing out the fact that you're rested. Okay, thanks. Maybe I'll make a shirt for some part of my brain that, that, that's uh, constantly contradicting my T-shirt ideas. I don't know if you could relate to that. I have a specialized part of my personality and my intellect or whatever. I don't know if that's a super ego. You know what? I think it feels like the id. If I don't know what the id is, though, but uh, who's just there to contradict T-shirt ideas. Uh, and they have a robust, uh, like, skill set. And say, I don't know if you could call that maladaptive because you say... We, no, I'm just here to I'm just here to shoot down your T-shirt ideas. Uh, it's just, I mean, I'm, I do serve a purpose, one purpose only, and rarely. I mean, for most humans, uh, they don't have that because they wouldn't be called into action. But you ramble enough about stuff uh, that yeah, I'm here. I'm here to take care of things. Uh, bad T-shirt ideas. I'm here to contradict them. 
wait a second though. Can I just point out like a little do this isn't quite CBT. Are you sure you're not contradicting every t-shirt idea? Could that be, a t by the way, could, do you think that could be, don't contradict it. Do you think that could be a t-shirt? Because I got to move on, um, to the fact that if you're listening, whatever's keeping you awake, whatever it feels like you deserve the rest you need so that your life is better. And uh, ideally that you get the rest you need on a regular basis and you could be out there flourishing and that your world is a better place. Now, the way we do it on the show is I send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to forget about what, what I was talking about. Then I'll, you know, repeat it. Then I'll backtrack. Then I'll, for, you know, then I'll say, wait a second, uh, Another T-shirt idea. Then I'll get distracted from that. So point, that's what pointless meanders and superfluous tangents are. All of this is to keep you company so that you could fall asleep. This is a podcast you kind of just barely listen to, like elevated background noise, or a friend who's rambling who has no expectation of being heard. I'm just rambling for your, I wouldn't say pleasure, but as a service to you. So this is a, like a podcast you kind of just listen to. It's also a podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. I keep you company while you fall asleep. There is no pressure to fall asleep here. That's why the shows are over an hour. And my job is really to be your boar bay or your boar sib or your boar cuz or your boar bestie or your neighbor, your boar burr, your boar bee, uh, your, uh, your boars, your boar bruh. Your boar friend, your friend who, who just talks in a boring way, uh, you know, so to help you fall asleep. So that's, uh, yeah, I don't know what my point was about. Oh, it's a podcast, you don't, no pressure to fall asleep. Yeah, that's why I'm going to be here over an hour. Because there's people listening who can't sleep or who wake up needing this podcast or who need a break during the day. So that not only is there no pressure to fall asleep, I'm here to be at the very end whether you're awake or asleep. I'm here to keep you company whether you're listening or not. So that's important for me to share. What else? Uh, pod, oh, this podcast takes a lot. It doesn't take a lot of getting used to, but it does take two or three tries. It can take more, or it could take two or three tries stretched over a period of six, seven years, as I've heard before, uh, just because it is so different. So when you first get to the show, I mean, if you're having trouble sleeping, you're already going to be, like, fed up if you're like me. And like you say, I don't know what this person's going to try to do here. And they don't seem to be getting a point and they're not very good at speaking. And I'm not so sure about this. Somebody recommended it or I found it or I searched for it. I saw it on a list. When are you going to put me to sleep, man? Uh, when some, I mean, talk about, are you sure you don't need somebody, uh, what did you say? T-shirt counterpoint or something? You might need somebody for a rambling counterpoint. And that's a normal way to come to the show because, yeah, if you've had trouble falling asleep and you try different stuff, why wouldn't you be doubtful? Well, let me tell you, the doubt goes on a little bit longer because it does take a, a, a getting used to, too, because maybe you're expecting something a little more zen-like or meditative. So it just takes some time to, oh, wait, a pie. oh I, now I get it. He's serious about his, he's serious about nonsensical rambling. So it just takes some getting used to to get to that point. Uh, so I understand. That's why I say give it two or three tries. I also have a website set up, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. Because there's so many people that feel so strongly that they'll never listen again about when they first meet me, you know, auditorily or whatever, that I want you to use that website if you say, I already can't stand you and I never will. I'd say, okay, well, let's see, because I've heard that before. But also, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you has other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there. Maybe one of those will put you to sleep. Then it's a win-win situation. Like, you don't have to dunk on me and say, like, uh, you don't have to let me know, and you, find, and you fall asleep. So there's that. Uh, what else do you need to know? Give me more good news as a new listener. Okay, well, I'm here to be your friend. I mean, that's a, that you don't have to listen to. And I do care. Those are the best piece of good news. But the show is structured in a, because of the caring, actually, the show is structured in a very deliberate way. 
Like the podcast has evolved a lot over the first 10 years of the show. So the show starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Then I say something silly. This time it was about dice, and then I got distracted. Uh, and then, like, uh, that way you feel seen and welcome, and you say, I could check that podcast out. So that's the, the, the greeting, and you kind of get a general sense of what this podcast is going to be. Then there's support, so the podcast is free. Most podcasts are free because of the, the support that, 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 uh, that the shows have. Then there's a long, meandering intro. Uh, meant to ease you into bedtime, which is separate from the support. Uh, and it goes on about 12 to 20 minutes of me rambling, but it's meant to ease you into bedtime. It does put a small percentage of people to sleep and a small percentage of people skip the intro. But for most people, the intro is a way to introduce the podcast, hear what Scoots is rambling about, something new probably, or in this case, T-shirt ideas or, you know, uh, Throw what are they, not throw pillows uh, point uh, not pointal are there pillow I'm sure there are pillows pointillism pillows but uh, I was just started thinking of like tongue what are those called tongue ti- tongue tires no tongue twisters is that what it's called it doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth does it because my tongue's already twisted but uh, is it tongue twisters or tongue it's not tongue tires it could be though. Could be it should be called tongue st- st- stub- stumblers, but that doesn't have alliteration. I already forgot what the the, the like uh, the whatever the t- tongue tire was about anyway. Slipped right out of my brain, so now I have no idea what I'm where I'm going. So, uh, oh, why is the intro so long? Is it just support for the show? No, it's uh, for a lot of regular listeners. It's a way to ease you into bedtime. A lot of people are listening as they're getting ready for bed or they're doing their bedtime routine or their wind down routine. And that's what's been shown to work. It works for me personally is having a way to ease me into bedtime. So that's what the intro does. Then there's the support between the intro and the show. So the show can be free. There's over 600 ad supported shows. There's a lot of people that rely on that sh- the show. So uh, that's cool. Then there's a bedtime story. I thought it was going to be about one thing, probably about crayons. I don't know. We'll see. And uh, then there's thank yous at the end of the show. So it's the structure of the show. It's what I make the show. And I'm really glad you're here. I really appreciate you coming by. Work really hard at your next drive. I really hope I can help you fall asleep. And uh, here's a couple of ways we get to do this for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. What if comparing car insurance rates was as easy as putting on your favorite podcast? With Progressive, it is. Just visit the Progressive website to quote with all the coverages you want. You'll see Progressive's direct rate. Then their tool will provide options from other companies so you can compare. All you need to do is choose the rate and coverage you like. Quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. All right, everybody, this is Scoots here, and uh, this is a episode long. This is a little behind the scenes first. I just start out being honest with you, a little behind the scenes, only, you know, bedtime level honesty, though. So those of you that listen to the podcast for a long time know that uh, the free and easy sound of the podcast comes from, you know, from like a lot of people working a lot of hours and all that kind of yada, yada, yada stuff. And that we record the show in pieces. Uh, The episodes are recorded, which is like, so I just recorded the thank yous for this episode. That's the first thing I recorded. And now I'm doing the episode portion, the story portion. So if you're listening to a story-only version of this episode, you're only hearing this part and not the thank yous and not the intro. And then the intro and the supporter zone, I'll, I will, I'll do sometimes the day after, sometimes the day before, sometimes the, rarely the same day just because it does take a lot more work than you hear. 
and energy than, you know, believe it or not, being this boring takes a lot of glucose from, our, you know, it does use a lot of brain power. And uh, so, uh, yeah, believe, believe it or not. Uh, and so, um, so sometimes what happens though is I record an intro for, I'm, I think it's going to be for one thing. You probably know this if you, if you, but maybe you don't. So I'm saying it again. Because this is a very, this is a fairly unique situation we're in right now, so that um, I, mean, I can't even find it. It was so long ago. <laughs> Got to be kidding me. Uh, is uh, so so okay? So usually, let's see. T- today particularly is a Sunday. I'm recording a full episode tomorrow on Monday. I will record an intro. I'm not sure what the intro will be for, but I'll be re- recording an intro for sure. And, uh, but today I'm recording an episode for, for an intro I recorded a long time ago, but now I can't even find it. Uh, I wanted to, like, usually I have notes, uh, and I don't know why, like, it, it just like more pressing things have come up. And then every time I've gone and I said, why don't we record that episode? Uh, it just hasn't happened. And, but today's the day because we need the episode, just, the intro is just waiting for the rest. You know, it's waiting for its partners uh, with the thank yous and the story. I was trying to figure out when I recorded it. Uh, I'm going through, okay, this is February when I'm recording this right now. And uh, I don't see anything from February. I'm going through January and uh, seeing what we recorded in January. Doesn't look like we recorded it in January. Now I'm in December, and I don't see it in December. So like WizKids, uh, Multiplex 1. Now we're going into November, Ren, Ray Fair, Ray at the Ren Fair, Sushi Go Unboxing, Trader Joe's Shopping 2. November 26th, Ray Renfair open, question mark, question mark. Uh, that could be it. Uh, Space Quest 2 bonus episode for Sleep With Me supporters, Sleep With Me Plus, Quest Busters, part two. Journey into World of Friends review, Journey into World of Friends finale. This is early November. Uh, then the holiday bonus episodes uh, for the holidays and Journey into World of Friends finale. Toys R Us episode, that's October. Couldn't have been earlier than this, uh, I don't think. Uh, let's just go back. Uh, Santa, v- Santa and Mars, Journey into World of Friends holiday, over to Sylvan Beach, a Fearless Flyer, fall 2023. December, September 28th, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, tw- uh, September, we were working on our 12th, 100th episode. Okay, well, I can honestly say I can't find it. Uh, interesting stuff here. So, oh, there it is. Whoa, boy, it was a long, t- August 21st, 2023. And there's not a lot of notes. It says crayon, question mark, question mark, question mark. Uh, and so it's recorded August 21st, 2023. So it's uh, September, October, November, December, January. About five and a half months later, I'm recording. recording. So it's a, that may be a record, uh, like on purpose. Like there's been times I've made mistakes before and then forgotten, or like recorded something that far out and forgot the intro or put the intro off. Now, let me t- check my, like, if I made it myself a uh, voice memo. You won't hear it, but uh, let me just see if I have any um, communications with my, communicate with myself. Uh, okay, yeah, so, okay, here we go. So I'm going to play this. It's only 21 seconds long. You won't hear it, but uh, I will. Okay, so good news, really good news. That was a good 21 seconds of, um, like, notes I made for myself. uh, And I texted that to myself right after I recorded the intro, which is good. And it was actually, believe it or not, it was the last text I sent myself. uh, So we were were taking a break uh, that whole time anyway. So basically, so this is meta, but it's cool because we'll get into it because... uh, so that helps me know, because you heard the intro, 
and here's the thing: the episodes all have the they're all recorded and mixed and and uh, en- like audio engineered, so that they kind of have the same sound, right? Uh, and so uh, ideally, you know, the, like uh, it's pretty seamless. So there's six months or five and a half months won't show any, you know, but, uh, so basically you heard an intro and now I'm like, I didn't listen to the intro. Uh, sometimes I will, but I thought this would be interesting. Um, so this, I guess, apparently, according to my voice memo, the uh, title of this episode would be the Cran Rambler. And I could kind of piece together that initially I was recording the intro for uh, Journey in the World of Friends because I was talking about 20-sided dice and uh, <laughs> forgot, to, you know, twenty the old 20-sided big farm. I think that was a different intro where I was joking about that. I so said, I didn't realize you couldn't say, you have to say plural with uh, 20-sided dice. Singular, it's a 20-sided big farm. Uh, but so, okay, so there's a couple of things. So first off was saying, my notes to myself were saying, okay, what you want to start talking about, which was interesting. So just in case, and I, I don't think this is the case anymore with uh, dun, dun, um, friends, friends of dragons everywhere uh, and uh, underground play, f- favorite underground places are cool, are cool-blooded friends, ga- role-playing games. The first time I got, like, the starter kit as a gift uh, for the holidays, uh, I'm assuming it was a holiday gift. It could have been a birthday gift. It was a, the red box, uh, so I don't know what edition that was. But when you got the game, you know, it came with the dice and everything, so you could start, you know, your initial adventuring. And it also came with a crayon because you would take your di- d- d- dice, uh, and it, I think in my case, it was a white crayon, and then you'd scrub on the dice, and then you'd well, the wax it would go into the in, in, in indentation for the numbers. And in, so instead of painting, the, like, uh, the numbers, uh, you were kind of painting them yourself, uh, and then you'd wipe the rest of the wax off. Uh, and... Uh, and it was just a very tactile, participatory process. I don't think that's the case anymore. I don't know, though. I mean, I, I do, do do know that I bought two different packs during in 2020, or three, I bought three, and I don't remember any of them. It, they've already been brought and bought and bought is the term, though. But, uh, I mean, unless you're playing, unless you're buying, uh, uh, what's that, what's the name of the cheerleading movie? Bringing on the role-playing, can you imagine that? Oh, boy, bringing on the role-playing game. That sounds like something we just should stop talking about, huh? Because you say there's no way to make that appropriate for <laughs> sleepy. Uh, so let's just move on. Bring it on. The role playing. You don't role playing. Role playing game. Uh, never mind. Uh, I mean, I guess it could be, but you'd have to be. It'd have to be very. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure somebody did it. Uh, so, okay, bring it on. The role playing game. Yeah, you choose your character. Uh, you could be. I, I didn't see the movie. Let's let's just lean into this, right? This is another thing about these episodes. Let's let's lean in. Since I'm a ram, you know, cr- doing the cran rambles. Uh, have we ever looked up Bring It On? I mean, I guess at some point I should watch the movie. Uh, Bring It On came out in 2000. Oh boy, not, that's not that's not the what an article I'm looking for. Bring It On film. Peyton Reed director. Jace, J, J, Jessica, Jessica Bendinger was a writer. Kristen Dunst, Eliza Dushku, uh, Jesse Bradford, Gabrielle Union. Two high school cheerleading teams' preparations for the national competition. Okay, so rem- reminiscent of the one... Uh, uh, <laughs> my, man, my mind is so... Under pressure, has, I was going to say, isn't it like that movie about the thing? That was in college, though. So I think that would be, for starters, it would be bringing on, we'd have to, it, we'd place it in college if it was a role-playing game for obvious reasons. Even though there won't be any of that, we say bringing on the role-playing game, like, uh, 
like uh, to, meant to be played at a kitchen table, whatever you do, you know, what, later, whatever. But this is uh, like uh, takes place in college or, you know, after college. Like, uh, I mean, here's a movie pitch, right? Bring it on, like, uh, I mean, why can't there be a, like, bring it on? I'm sure that, like, uh, again, I'm, this is an idea I'm pitching, not for free taking, by the way. But uh, we could reach out, like, uh, bring it on. Uh, like people my age, uh, I see nobody wants to see that. Uh, you shouldn't be, you sh but I already been bought and, uh, but yeah, bringing on the, okay. So let's learn about movie bringing on, then we'll set it in college and we'll imagine it as a role playing game. Even though it's supposed to be talking about crayons, this is somewhat interesting. Okay. So bringing on was released in, uh, August of 2000. So it looks like the last weekend in August. Was box office success, number one spot. I mean, this is how popular it is. That line, which I'm only presuming is from the movie, it's already been brought in, is, uh, I mean, still still relevant to me. Uh, even though I never saw the movie, which I'm admitting, you know, I don't think it's cult classic. Maybe I should watch it. Uh, okay, so worldwide gross, 90 million uh, there were six direct video sequels, uh, none of which had the original cast. Bring it on again. Bring it on all or nothing. Bring it on in it to win it. Bring it on dance off to the finish. Bring it on worldwide cheer. In the TV film, bring it on cheer or uh, sleep. Okay, there'll be multiple spoilers here. Oh, no, this is college. Okay, great. That's even better. That's good. Okay, I'm more comfortable talking about this or seeing the movie because it takes place in college. No, just be a little, uh, like, uh, though, I mean, one of my favorite actresses was in, uh, how, like, uh, I'm a high school cheerleader or whatever. That's a, that's a cult classic. What was the name? I can't, in the movie, I can't, I think it's like, uh, I'm a high school cheerleader. Is that what it's called? Anyway, uh... Okay. Oh, Natasha Leone. That, like, like that's what, uh, sorry, I forgot to, okay. So, uh, okay, Torrance Shipman, oh, is in Rancho Carne High School, San Diego. Boyfriend is at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Okay, and they're going for a national title, six national title. Torrance is uh, the next team captain, replacing Big Red after she graduates. Uh, but then, wait a second, Torrance Shipman, who's Carver? After, uh, oh, teammate Carver is injured, he has to sit the season out. And then Missy Panatone, Pantone, gymnast uh, from Los Angeles uh, with her brother Cliff. Okay, then Missy says the Toros uh, plagiarize their cheers uh, from Torrance, uh, and then the, they go to L.A. to watch the East Compton Clovers uh, from Missy's previous high school, who they competed against, uh, and they perform another routine. Isis is the captain, and it reveals that Big Red videotaped the Clovers routines and, uh, like, uh, basically copied them for the Toros. Torrance says, oh, no, uh... And also, she dropped the spirit stick, which is never supposed to touch the ground. Uh, so the Clovers say, "Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go against you in the national versus Toros in the national competition, which they weren't in last year because they're better cheerleaders." Okay, then uh, Torrance and Cliff begin to get to know each other, and Aaron grows more distance. Uh, after Torrance informs the Toros about the routines, the team votes including in favor of using current routine. Torrance agrees because there's no time to use a new routine, while Missy reluctantly goes along with him. So I don't know who's place who either, but that's it. When do they say it's already been brought? And it's my question. Bring it on. It's already been brought. And I guess at that point, right, okay. Toro's home game, Isis and the teammates perform the routine in front of the whole school. Wait, the Toro's next, Isis and her teammates. Oh, the, so the I, the Clovers come to a Toro's game, do the routine. Then uh, 
After advice from Aaron, Torrance recruits uh, like something. They hire a choreographer, Sparky Pol Polistri, and who's not nice. I don't know who plays Sparky, and that doesn't go well. Torrance speaks to competition, learns her uh, choreographer provided that routine for six other teams, but they're the defending champs. Uh, so they do get to defend their crown, but they'll need a new routine. Big Red says, uh, you're not a leader, Torrance. Okay, so this is part of Torrance's thing. Uh, then they don't steal. Okay, cool. this is a lot. This is a really detail. This has every single plot detail. Some movies don't have this in here. Sorry. This is very sleepy, though. I mean, not if, not because of the movie, just because uh, it is because I already lost my place. Okay, so then they get to go to Daytona Beach. Uh, Torrance is, you know, not doing his leader. Uh, considers quitting. Okay, moment, you know, of a time and change or whatever they say. Aaron tells Torrance to step down as captain, and uh, team rivals Courtney and Whitney. Cliff sees Torrance and Aaron together, breaks up with her, severs his friendship. Uh, Torrance breaks up with Aaron. He's distanced, doesn't believe in her, obviously. Oh, he's not yet. He also is not very loyal. She uses Cliff's previous encouragement uh, and his pers personally made mixtape for an inspiration to have a new routine. The Clovers are also unable to attend. They need more funding to get to the Nationals. Torrance uh, tells her father to sponsor the team. Isis refuses uh, because it says, yeah, you just feel guilty from copying us. Instead, uh, the uh, Clovers get on a talk show, and they get their funds through that. And then the Clovers and the Toros make it to the final, Cliff cheering on the team. And Torrance and Isis end up giving each other both last-minute advice. Uh, and one team wins, the other team comes in second, obviously. But with a newfound—I won't spoil that part—a newfound respect— uh, and also, uh, you know, blossoming love. Uh, okay, here's the cast. Kristen Dunst was Torrance Shipman. Eliza Dushku was Missy Pan Pantone. Jesse Bradford, Cliff Pantone. Gabrielle Union's Isis. Uh, Claire Kramer's Courtney. That's Whitney's best friend. Anyway, we don't have to go on and on and on, huh? I just want to know who Big Red, like, uh, okay. Who said uh, it's already been brought and is what I want to know. I don't know. Production. Um, this was pitched as uh, Clueless Meets Strictly Ballroom. And uh, then, uh, yeah, there's a theme of cultural appropriation. Uh, it's passed over 28 times uh, before finding a home. Wow, that's some, that's cool. Like that, uh, I mean, it's not cool. It got passed over 28 times, but that uh, uh, Jessica Ben Mendinger uh, stuck with it. Uh, okay, casting. Everybody was expected to have a cheer prepared. They wanted to use his little stunt doubles. Uh, uh, Reed and Union met numerous times to discuss the best way to approach her character. Oh, Peyton Reed is the director, okay. And uh, filming, reception, and 63% uh, on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, Metacritic 52 out of 100. They have a lot of quotes. This is really well-researched accolades. Number 30 on the best 50 high school movies, Legacies. It's been lauded as a rare team, <laughs> rare team film to address issues of uh, systemic inequality, cultural appropriation, intersectional feminism. Those are seen as the major factors for the film's continued legacy. And it holds up tw well 20 years later. Uh, bring it on can be often overlooked, uh, and ostracized, uh, and let's see. Okay. Bring it on to five sequels we talked about. There's also stage musical, uh, Lions Theater in Atlanta. K 
came out uh, January 16th, 2011. Uh, oh, Lynn did it uh, with Tom Kitts, Amanda Green, Jeff Witte. Uh, let's see. And let's see where else. National Tour started in 2011. And after a ra true after after an open number, uh, uh, that truly dazzles. Uh, the score hits its stride. Uh, music opened on Broadway, uh, and it was uh, on Broadway for a little bit. Let me just check one more thing here. Um, don't know if any of this helps me thus far with uh, coming up with. Uh, a, uh, um, what do you call that thing? What do you call it? So, okay, so role-playing game, I guess it, maybe I'm stretching it, right? Well, it could be. I mean, it could be, like, within, I know there's, like, all these new role-playing systems, right, that are pretty flexible. But maybe it could also be, like, one of these more real-world real world games. Uh, no, I was trying to think if it could be, like, uh, like, uh, Stevie B, like, our friend, uh, our favorite know-it-all is big into this game that I've been meaning to check out. Uh, what do they call them? I don't know what they're called, uh, but it's like uh, the co the Tears of the Clock Tower, it's called. I mean, it's called something else, but it's like one of those games, like uh, none of the games you can say. Uh, I mean, there's a popular show on NBC right now about it, and there's a game, you know, right around, like all of us stay around among us. Uh, I guess you can say that one, yeah. But I don't really understand the mechanics of those games. Uh, but, okay, so either one, we'd have to kind of identify other roles, uh, which, it, so this is one thing, like, uh, so obviously there's, like, the choreographer, that's a role, right? Uh, then there's, like, the leadership role, which I kind of think should be di different. Like, there's probably, I mean, there's, like, okay, so we could go into, like, what are your areas of ex expertise? Choreography, like, music choices, uh, which kind of, like, is, you could help with the choreographer. Um, leadership, uh, charisma, uh, gymnastics, uh, which is already a skill. But these aren't exactly, air you're right, brain, uh, uh, finances, you need somebody with finances. Uh, what else? Uh, flair, flair is a good one. You're right, flair. So these would be different ability. Would those be, I don't know what any of this attributes. Uh, I mean, I guess we could use, but what about use of magic? You're right. Is this, would this be a role playing game without magic? No. So I guess then we'd have to enter a, so it'd probably be better in a different universe, right? If we're having like, uh, bring it on our world, bring it on the role-playing game in our world, you'd say, okay, well, um, again, you'd see well, what adventures other than winning the national championship and then whatever, you, you're kind of uh, grasping at straws. If you're going to have a role-playing game, do you, like, like it'd be very niche and it's, <laughs> Obviously, be very niche. Uh, uh, probably only on a sleep podcast, but um, uh, to move beyond it, uh, you, you say, okay, so it would have, like, oh, I'm, I guess this is a long winded way of saying it would have to, maybe it could happen in a bring it on universe. So that would help with the um, other game, the other movies, uh, ga like, like make them as part of the game. So that would help with the other movies like folding them in because it would have had to flush out some sort of bring it on larger bring it on universe there but i still say it would have to be like a, a universe like a cheer-based universe right would it be a cheer-based economy i mean again I, I think this lends ourselves okay j just hear me out here i think we're 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 closer to a solution than we're than we are further because we do have a world that this fits in the larger context of the world, which is um, uh, the world of Dr. Triangle and Isosceles. Because you say, okay, so, in, and then also, um, which was in, influenced by Station Eleven. Like, the, after I read Station Eleven, that's when I was like, oh, what if, uh, like, that's where I kind of started pondering ideas for Dr. Triangle and Isosceles. 
And so th- th- I think that's a good world for bring it on. That would be the universe that bring it on is uh, the role playing where the role like uh, th- that would be the general situation. So groups of cheer, 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 cheerers or cheerleaders. Uh, let's just say cheerleaders. And actually, in some sense, it's like, yes, uh, in this world, that's actually what we do. We lead through cheer. And just like Dr. Triangle and Isosceles, or uh, like the characters in Station Eleven, whether you're watching the show or the film, I mean, uh, the show or the book, uh, like the cheerleaders. So there's like, I mean, it's a larger world, right? Uh, but it's a world where, I mean, there's a, like, so we have a lot of benefits for, for, uh, like, uh, we don't have, I mean, again, we'd have to build into the lore why cheerleaders, but I mean, this does make a lot of sense as poo pooing it as some part, parts of uh, us may say, okay, so like, uh, we have cheerleaders. I mean, it'd be cool if it was cheerleaders between 18 and if, and you know, 70 years old too. And they say, yeah, we have our cheer squads, right? And a dan- you could go, you could say, there's all, we also have a dance, you know, dance teams, whatever you want to call it. But we're, uh, we're just using the term, you see, we could do the, like, we could loosen up the term cheerleader, obviously. But you'd say, okay, cheer- cheerleaders, like advantages for this world that has like some extra challenges than the world we live in. Okay, teamwork, that's one, like ability to live, work, and live in community, or at least exist in community, because communities are going to be, so sense of community, teamwork and a sense of community, uh, like a, a leadership structure, uh, those are all kind of inter, inter, intertwined, uh, like a, a ability to uh, be gatherers and uh, looker forers, you know, resource uh as you say, in resource management, I guess, is a way to say it in, in a game context and a sleep podcast context. Because you say, okay, we, we have like uh, a lot of us are very athletic, uh, like uh, fast or can jump or can move. Uh, not only like uh, physically flexible, but maybe flexible in many other ways uh, with thinking and creativity. So, yeah, we have the ability to gather resources maybe a little bit more efficiently than other groups or communities. So we can do, deal with some of the challenges of this universe. Uh, now, now the, the world of Dr. Triangle and Isosceles, they had a more sp- specific thing, but we're going a little bit broader, right? Because in Dr. Triangle and Isosceles, that was a world without math. And I guess that like, uh, but, but it was like a world, you know, what would the world be like without math? And then these two, uh, characters are going through the universe performing, uh, and teaching people lessons about math, you know, in a world that kind of forgot, like, uh, stop believing in math, uh, said, oh, math doesn't matter. Like what would happen if that, that was like the other thing. It's like, what if station 11 like that kind of world, but uh, what and why, what happened? Okay, well, in this world, people just stop believing in math. Uh, they said, math, don't buy it. Uh, don't need it, don't want it, forgot what it was. Uh, and, you know, what if there was, you know, demigods and goddesses and gods and goddesses based on all that? But we don't have to get that specific with the cheer, cheer groups uh, because... Uh, in a world with uh, more challenging resources, uh, they would have certain advantages. Then you could say, well, how do they acquire, if there's like, uh, how do they acquire, like then you could have different alignments of cheer groups, right? Because then you have the cheer groups uh, like that uh, want to like build more community within communities. So similar to Dr. Triangle and Isosceles and Station Eleven, you know, they maintain their funding or some of the resource gathering by going places and leading through cheer. And that can be also a way they sustain their community. Like, because some people keep traveling with the group and some people won't. Or they could stay and be like a large, larger community. So, oh, yeah, we got two cheer squads that live here. And uh, when we're feeling, you know, uh, you know, every day, they got, we got an AM cheer, 
midday cheer, you know, evening cheer. On the weekends, we got nighttime cheers. Uh, and uh, we even have small, you know, that could be, okay, now we're getting more and more into it. So then you could have an even more developed world. So you get these, like a city-state type world. And uh, and then again, you could have, then you could get into some sort of like a structure, like a more formal one. And then you could say, okay, instead of, so this would be a little bit different. There was a movie about it that came out when, I don't, I think it was before I was born. I don't know why it was like, uh, but it was like about roller derby uh, being, and I think it was, it got remade too. And it was like, basically like, what if instead of like, argue, instead of our city states uh, wasting, re like this would be such great leadership actually. So they, maybe the cheerleaders should run, I mean, like the leaders of the cheerleaders, I mean, if, you know, as long as they're, you know, the, the, as long as their definition of bringing on is like with love and kindness and tolerance, like they should be leading this world. And they say, yeah, well, instead of wasting resources to gather resources, which seems like a lot of like what happens in these kind of worlds, uh, even the worlds of adventure, you say, okay, well, we're going to go uh, put on some plate armor and dance, do a dance off in plate armor. So one of us is so tired we can't. And they say, well, that's uh, like not a great use of anybody's resources. Uh, First off, you know how much work it takes to make plate armor and you got to gather all, that's great, but, uh, you know, couldn't we just use that for something else? And then why would you dance off with each other? Like, especially if you're going to do an isolation, when you could have a cheer off, uh, one, it, within the word, uh, part of the goal is spreading cheer. So this has like this, maybe Joy Germ Joan is the uh, matriarch uh, leader of this whole thing. Joy Germ Joan was part of my childhood. Uh, somebody like uh, had a parade that uh, tried to spread joy throughout the world. She comes up on the episodes every once in a while. She had a foundation called the Joy Germ Foundation, and its whole purpose was to spread joy. Uh, cheer is a little bit different, but uh, it's not that different, right? Uh, so that's cool. Like, uh, so, okay, so then. Um, Okay, but it, so, yeah, that would be interesting. So Joy Germ Joan, her character has created the world. I mean, if we wanted to make it, this is a game, not a movie, but you always have to have some sort of a, a po equally strong opposing force. And I, I prefer also to have an environmental conditions uh, and then maybe a ticking clock or something. But we could, you know, you know, that can all be figured out, or the DM could figure that out, or the cheer, 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 cheerleader, the CL. I'm running, yeah, I'm running this game. Uh, so, yeah, then, like, there could be, that could be, like, the general thing. It's like, okay, then you're preparing for these cheer-offs uh, between, you know, your different city-states. And I don't know if that'd be a game mechanism. That could just be part of the game's lore of like why is so like why is cheerleading so important? Uh, and you say, well, didn't Scoots just explain it over like the past fifteen minutes, and it didn't make any sense, but it did. And they say, okay, well, uh, but then you'd have adventures, right? Because uh, and you would be friends more than likely with the people on your cheer squad. So then you could go on smaller adventures with them. Or you'd be trying to make an adventure, um, and, uh, yeah. And I mean, then there could be magic, I think, uh, and science, like a form of science that's magic, like, or alchemy. Cause you say, okay, well, your archers are going to have special effects or yeah, if you combine this, this, and this, uh, it produces this results. So then, like, then you have, you could raise your team's endurance, you know, like a buff. Uh, you say, okay, but this, you know, if we do this combo with our um, magic style cheer, you know, then we could have double endurance, you know, or the inspiration, that would be good, like, that instead of uh, magic, like, one of those things could be inspiration instead of, uh, I don't know, mana. You say, oh, yeah, we're extra inspiring. And they say, are you inspiring your team or the audience, right? 
Or again, if you were working from the other side, you'd say you de-inspire, or deflate, or you know, be a downer. And you know, maybe it is the thing of like the video, the movie, since it's a classic. Uh, it is like like oh, in the world before, right? Uh, like these, so all the characters, particularly from the main movie, it sounds like, because uh, it seems like it had a great message too. And, uh, like, uh, also the, the, all the other movies, like, are, are like the historical texts, right? Like, can we talk about that? I never read the book Canticle for Leibowitz, uh, but I meant to, but I think I understand the basic concept. Uh, so in this movie, like, that is like the, the, the text, uh, bring it on the movie, uh, but again, then you could have suddenly this gathering force who's saying like, well, I've decided to, uh, that it's already been brought, like, I'm going to bring it, uh, for another reason, uh, instead of like the solution that seemed like it was reached in the movie, like the movie started with taking without permission, right? Appropriating or whatever. And, uh, like, but it ended in some sort of collaborative respect or like, I, I don't know. I, I just read a Wikipedia article. Let's not get too deep, but like the opposing force could be still like on that of like, uh, and then of course you could have like the, like different tones of that, like, uh, conformity. Oh no, we only cheer like this. And, uh, you know, the, the gray worlds, this is how we cheer just like that sleep podcast. Uh, we don't bring anything on. We just do talk like this. You know, don't do, you know, don't bring it on, anything on. Uh, just make it sleepy. And you say, okay, but uh, I don't know, man. It's just so it hasn't already been brought in. But I'm just trying to think of ways to make it more interesting. Uh, I guess like all the high school, like, uh, like all the high schools of the old world could be like somehow forgotten. So those could be places that go on smaller adventures instead of going underground or to colleges. Yeah. It'd be like, okay, well, we're going to go back to, you know, the university in Nebraska has been uh, forgotten. We're going to go there, you know, we've heard lore of uh, singing, uh, you know, deep within the uh, athletic center. And we're going to go there and uh, find out, uh, you know, like, uh, and then you have another quest. Uh, the thing is, we'd have to, like, usually they're cheer squads. So, so these would be more like smaller squads, which does not necessarily. So I'm just trying to think of how we put a good, think, I'm trying to think of how we put a good context around that, right? Of like, uh, why is it like only between four and seven cheers instead of uh, what I would imagine is like somewhere between ten and fifteen? Yeah, I don't, I don't have, I don't have a clear answer to that. I guess, uh, I mean, I guess you could have NPCs that you pick up uh, that are going to be in your performances, maybe. But I guess like, yeah, the world that's changed is that, yeah, no, the cheer squads or cheer, cheer, cheer teams are much smaller now, uh, just because the world has changed. It's totally normal to cheer with, uh, I mean, you could, if you have, uh, if you have a cheer in your heart, then, uh, you could, che 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 you know, cheer with something that rhymes with, uh, like, uh, you don't always, you don't always need another to take part, uh. You just let your cheer out, like outside yourself, uh, and cheer and cheer and cheer, and uh, you'll feel cheer's wealth. Uh, that was the sage wisdom passed down uh, from uh, Joy Germ Joan, I guess. Uh, so I think we're, I mean, I think there's still some holes. I'm just trying to think of the biggest holes and uh, bring it on the role playing game. Uh, um, you say, I mean, I guess like learning about a whole new universe, again, you could set it very, I mean, the other thing would be to go very specific specificity. So whenever the movie is transferred to college, whatever the imaginary college is, and then you just have some, like, it's like more of like a shorter adventure, mini adventure, uh, 
And uh, so then you need to gather resource. You have to gather a squad, training, equipment, experience points. So you'd have to do other forms of cheering, uh, like uh, specific missions. I guess that would make sense. Like you say, okay, well, you know, the freshman class, uh, like, uh, like uh, locally can't, you know, go to the high school and teach the freshman class math or cheering. And, uh, you could get, you could gather resources. So the high school would be, uh, um, lunch, lunch would be a good one. Yeah. So then you could have advent, like a little adventure of lunch, uh, and, uh, like navigating that, you know, making up different adventures at lunchtime. Um, what else could we have? Uh, fundraiser. So they have to do a fundraiser. Uh, pep rally where no one feels any pep or any reason to rally, uh, uh, affecting other outcomes. So like they could do something, you know, be like, can we raise the test scores of the school through cheering? I guess the adventurers could choose, you know, do we want to help the athletic teams? Do we want to help the, the you know, how come there's no cheerleaders at the math, co- you know, math or the, you know, math competition or something else, right? Uh, you know, what about the e- esports, uh, cheering for esports? Uh, so they could choose to do that. Uh, I mean, you could really cloak it in, in like, uh, if this was some sort of crafty parents that's smarter than maybe, like, okay, now you got to do your homework. That'll get you 50 experience points uh, for your characters. Uh, you know, don't use your phone after seven. Uh, you get this many experience points. Uh, so I guess there's other things, but that's kind of like, a, like a, I think that's a fairly, that this is like a, a, a reasonable idea. Uh, and you could listen to all the soundtracks. You could listen to the soundtrack from the musical while you play. You could have all the characters from all the movies be, you know, all the movies could be other like uh, scenarios, right, that you get to play through. I don't know, the, like the whole, I mean, I'm not saying this about the movie. It's just like, be, you can't like, uh, then they're a little bit too on the rails, right? So like they don't have as much uh, like open, open worldness, even though all like the adventures just take a little bit of work, you know, more work than a sleep podcast. But this also kind of gives you an idea of what happens when, uh, I thought I was going to talk about one thing. Then I put it off because I said, okay, at some point we'll make the episode about the Grand Rambler. And I don't know this, I don't think this will be a regular series, but uh, there's definitely other cram based episodes. And we're going to do coloring on Sleep With Me Plus um, for coloring pages. So I guess when this episode comes out, that'll encourage me to get that started because Emily's been making coloring pages for all our art uh, for the show. So that's exciting to do is like, uh, to have that. And, uh, so that's another exciting thing, uh, crayon related, but yeah, this was rambling. I thought I was going to ramble about crayons and then I misspoke about brought, you know, whatever brought, brought, bought and that's where we went. So I'm glad to uh, be able to get to do this. It's fun, uh, to carry you off into dreamland. Good night. All right, this is Scoots. This is uh, like a thank you. So I want to thank the people that recently joined or moved over to Sleep With Me Plus, Amy, Elliot, and Seth. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. And Natalie and Thomas. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Julie, Cheryl, and Debbie. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Rachel, Myrna, and William. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Trevor, Teresa, and Dash, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thomas, Adrian, and Anna, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sonia, Meredith, and Melissa, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Anna, Brandon, and Allison, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jennifer, Troy, and Ann, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Tracy, Rachel, and John, thank you. Oh, John and Karen, thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody who supports the show directly on Sleep With Me Plus or used to support the show on Patreon. Uh, thanks, everybody who supports our sponsors, lets them know about it, lets me know about it, takes the free trials uh, or spreads the word about the show, subscribes, you know, wherever you support the show, however you do it. 
uh, that's the reason we do the thank yous is uh, to say, say thanks uh, because I couldn't do it without you. So uh, I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, and this is Scoots coming up with either a tuck you in spots or some other thing. Uh, thanks and good night. All right, everybody, this is Scooter. This is uh, Weeks in Review, and uh, this is where I run through uh, my Weeks in Review stuff. Uh, what, what was on Sleep With Me Plus in the past month uh, and what you can expect to see on uh, in the public feed, uh, too. Now, I have, uh, if, you're, if, you, if you sign up for Sleep With Me Plus or you're already signed up for Sleep With Me Plus, I highly recommend using a podcast app that allows search within the feeds, but using just one podcast app for um, Sleep With Me Plus content only, and then keeping your other podcasts, your daytime podcasts, and whatever app you use now. And I would just check out a couple podcast apps you could choose from on uh, Apple are uh, Overcasts, iCatcher, Pocket Casts, and on Android you could try out Pocket Casts or Podcast Addict, uh, for this example, I have the only thing I have in the, my app is uh, the, uh, the. I think this is the ten to, to. I think this is the Boar Friends level. I have four podcasts: uh, the ad-free full episodes, the story-only episodes. And nothing in Sleeping Me Plus has ads except for the really old episodes in the archives. We got the story-only uh, versions of the show, the all-intro, all-night versions of the show, and then the bonus episodes. So let's start with the bonus episodes, actually. So Saturday, a new Posty episode came out. It was uh, one that uh, Russell loved, and uh, uh, that came out. And that's in the bonus feed. You know, some people like listening to the Posty Super Deluxe episodes during the day. Some people sleep to them. And, uh, yeah, so that one is in the bonus feed. And then it uh, looks like we got a bonus coming out for uh, Boar Besties and Boar Friends on Thursday of this week, which is April, to April 15th when I'm recording this. Uh, and then we have uh, another Posty Super Deluxe came out uh, a couple weeks ago. That was a picnic lunch with Scooter. And that's in the bonus feed, and that makes just so much easier for those of you uh, that don't, like, automate your playlist or anything, just to kind of build and choose how you want to listen. Let's pop into all intro, all night episodes. I know an all intro episode is coming out this Thursday. Uh, last Thursday was uh, Make Great Pets Season 1 Part 2, almost six hours. It's, uh, it's about the max length we can get and have a good file size. Uh, so that was like uh, seven episodes of Make Great Pets. Uh, April 3rd, all intro episode came out. Um, and then uh, we had... Uh, March is that bonus episode, so there was another all-intro episode. So that's in the all-intro all-night feed. And again, like so much easier, like these all-intros. Uh, is that what everything that's in there? 277 episodes uh, split between all in So if you love all-intros, I bet 200 of those are all-intros, maybe even more. And then in the store, both in the story-only episode feed and then in the all-ad-free feed... Let's run through the new episodes. Bring It On week started uh, last week. So we had uh, 1254 was our first watch along where I watched uh, a part, half, half of bring, the movie Bring It On. Wednesday uh, was 1253, Ben Broughton, The Cran Rambler. That was one of those episodes that had an intro. They said I should make an episode based on this intro. Went to make an episode based on the intro, and it went in an even another direction of uh, what if there was an RPG game based on the movie Bring It On, which led me to figure out I never watched Bring It On. Let me learn more. Then I ended up watching Bring It On. Then April 7th was uh, our uh, Alba Savalix, uh, like, we're getting ready, uh, big announcement if I haven't made it anywhere. We're going to do three seasons of a crossover with Alba Salix. Uh, so um, that's cool. So, uh, yeah, like uh, that, that's uh, something uh, we're looking forward to doing. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that was uh, episode one of that. Um, or that was the one we did originally. Then uh, 1252 was uh, the finale of The Great British Bake Off. Uh, 
and episode 10, uh, then uh, Multiplex 5, uh, Tiki Transistor Hut, that was a good one. 1250, one of my favorite episodes, probably in the past few years, a Wildy Wonka tour that came out of like uh, some news articles about the experience. And I said, this has got to be an episode. And that will be a series, I mean, like a recurring thing. Uh, then uh, Great British Bake Off, uh, episode 9, Patissier. And Multiplex episode four, and then we're back to our last audio news. So it's everything. And again, if you ever need support, support at supercast.com is there to help you. Though if you're listening to this episode, I'm assuming um, you're not like uh, you, you don't need support. But if you do, and the, and the other thing is like, yeah, these are, uh, st- this is my main way to communicate. I learned this on Patreon. Most people just don't read their emails from Supercast or from me, or and most people aren't on our Discord or follow our social media. And so these uh, messages are how the majority of supporters get their information. I do do it in a sleepy voice because there's like, I put it in the, at the end of the free show too. But um, yeah, like... Uh, this is a kind of key way, but these episodes are easy to skip, especially if you're just using one podcast app, right, uh, and building your playlists uh, from that podcast app. So, yeah, thanks, everybody, for uh, supporting the show. Reach out if you have any feedback. Feedback at sleepingmepodcast.com. If you need support, support at uh, supercast.com. And uh, good night.